I'm back and I'm sane. I have a few diagnoses. Uh, I have bipolar disorder. I have OCD. I have CPTSD and I have anxiety. And I like to, to list them all the way other people list their degrees at the end of their name, you know? <laughs> yeah, because mine took more time and more money. So I deserve more credit. I'm sorry, I do. I do. So I would say the biggest announcement I have to my YouTube viewers who haven't seen me in four years is that I am actually, like, on paper deemed sane for the first time in my entire adult life. Um, when I started with this therapist, I was going uh, two times a week. I was seeing her two times a week. I am now only going to therapy every other week with the potential of maybe only going once a month. I have never in my entire adult life not had weekly, if not multiple times. I mean, I, I, one, there was a point in my life where I was going to therapy five days a week. I mean, that's just that's a reality of my story. Um, but now it's not like that. And it's, a, it, it's very much in part to do to my current therapist. And, and I did want to just talk a little bit about like where I am now, who I am now, how I'm doing. So much hasn't changed. I'm still Gab, but I'm a happier, um, settled, living in my true essence, making decisions in my true essence Gab that I've never been as an adult. And that's a really exciting place. It's also very scary because um, people are like, hey, you used to just not care about anything and why do you care and it's like well because i want to live and i want to enjoy myself and i want to be the best i can possibly be for the people that i value the most in this world and i'm going to be there for them and i just you know i have a lot i value in life and i want to you know foster that so i would say um i ran into a woman uh just actually this past week and she was like gab do you remember me we worked together like years ago i was like i do remember how are you and she was like, good, how are you? And I'm like, I'm doing great. And she's like, I can see that. She's like, Gab, you know, you've always had a very like big, larger than life, infectious energy, but you still have it. But I can tell you're just happy and full of joy. And I'm like, I know, isn't that great? Like I didn't have to lose Gab to be the best version of Gab. Like, and that's been so exciting. I didn't know that would happen with sanity. So I just want to talk a little bit of like why I am where I am thanks to therapy. This is just kind of an intro reintroduction video, getting back to YouTube. I plan on making more videos from this point forward. I love YouTube. It's always been way more my speed than TikTok. TikTok, now that I'm sane, TikTok is what I imagine like people who go through recovery and they can't go back into bars. That's how I feel about TikTok. Like every time I'm on TikTok, I'm like, you, everyone needs help. Help you. You all need help. So it's tough. It's very tough to go there. So I, I'm excited to be back on YouTube. So uh, the woman I bumped into was like, Gab, can you just tell me like what has changed? Like why, why do you think your mental health is, is doing so much better? And I said a big part of that was my current therapist. The very first thing she did when she met me, I told her the diagnoses I had. But she said, I don't like to treat diagnoses. I like to treat symptoms. So right away, she erased everything I had ever learned in therapy, specifically with like bipolar therapy, because that is a very specific way of treatment. And at first I was very scared. I actually like, I don't want to say I name called her, but I was like, you're a hippie. You can't help me. I have like a real mental disorder. And I was kind of hard on her. But the techniques, the things that she's taught me, um, I mean, guys, I've bought books, workbooks. I've done worksheets. I've done so many different forms of therapy. Um, uh, one of the most successful forms of therapy that I have done is called EMDR. It's specifically very beneficial to people who have PTSD, CPTSD. It's not for everybody, but it was a game changer for me. Um, I've done exposure therapy that only helped to a certain point. I used to be deathly afraid of bugs. If you followed me, I would always talk about stink bugs. Guys, if a stink bug lands on me now, I pick it up. I'm like, what are you doing, little buddy? You need to get out of here. You need to get out of here, buddy. And then I, I let him go. Like, that's, like, I've had lantern flies crawl on me. And I'm like, ah! Ugh, and I just, like, brush them off. It doesn't bother me. So ex exposure therapy worked. But there was a point in my exposure therapy where it stopped working. And so about a year ago, my therapist and I had a big discussion. And, um... I received two new diagnoses, which I know you're, you're probably like, but didn't she just say, don't worry about diagnoses? True, but these were kind of important ones to kind of figure out my story and what's been going on with my brainy wainy. And my two new diagnoses are ADHD and autism. 
Uh, I was given a test to see if I have autism. I got every question right, which meant I have autism. <laughs> and the minute we put those pieces into place with the EMDR, the exposure therapy, I also have done this, uh, this thing called um, parts work. It's part of like the internal family system, I think is like the full umbrella of what it's called, but it's called parts work. Uh, between that parts work, I have truly been a different person. Like I will always have the disorders, but I can quickly use the tools I have learned and put out any, you know, mental fires that might be happening in my brain, like within seconds. My suffering time has been reduced at least by 99%. And I mean that. I used to just exist constantly with my brain being loud, my brain partially abusing me, my brain setting me up for failure. And I don't say that in a negative way. The parts of my brain were all trying to help me while that was happening. So I know it wasn't like necessarily my brain being mean. It was my brain trying to help me during those times. But I don't have that anymore. My brain is far less loud. I am able to conquer my anxiety so quickly. I rely. Another uh, technique I use a lot is gratitude. The minute I'm like overwhelmed with anxiety, um, I'd say money anxiety, I just immediately stop what I'm worrying about and I just start picking things that I'm so grateful to have in my life. And before I know it, I'm not feeling anxious anymore. So that's really helped too. Um, yeah, I'm excited to, to, to talk to you guys more and to share what I've learned, what's going well in my life. Professionally, things have been going really well. Uh, Josh and I, we're starting our 12th season of the Josh and Gab show. Our first school gigs are this week. Um, I have my, a mental health uh, talk this week at a high school. I'm really excited. I'm, I do mental health talks, motivational speaking. I've been doing a lot of that over the last four years. Back with Josh and the band. And then stand-up. I have a bunch of really exciting stand-up opportunities through Disability Pride. I'm going up to Scranton again to do a comedy show uh, to raise money for the John Malvisi Foundation. I have my monthly Brillo Box show uh, at, the, uh, at the Brillo Box in Pittsburgh where we raise money for different nonprofits every month. So I'm really just excited for this upcoming school year, this fall, and I and I hope you all are doing well. Please leave comments. Let me know how you're doing. Um, and I'm I'm I promise I'm back. I'm back. I'm gonna start making YouTube videos. And uh, and my friend Arvin has moved back to the East Coast, so uh, he and I will be making videos again. I just saw him this weekend. Maybe I'll throw a couple clips from Arvin in. Oh. Arvin's here. Oh yeah, we could talk. We can have the windows down. Hey, all right. Here's the thing. Arvin's here. Did you turn it on? There we go. Arvin's here, guys. He's visiting. Right. From? Akron. He's, he's in Akron. Two hours away. Mm -hmm. So this is back. Back. We're back. back. I don't have to do road trips. <laughs> Which I've talked to you about a date in September. Anyway, here's the thing. Arvin's back. We're going to see if you can get. Ah! The microphone. Sorry. They're going to hate that. You're going to hate that. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, the, I know. The real one. Yeah, the first one. Am I allowed to laugh at all the parts I think are funny? Oh, absolutely. Okay, because I didn't know if like people are going to be there for the first time and be like, shh. Probably not. No. Do you, do you, you don't think so? No, no, no. Oh, my God. Because no. there's so many lines that are so funny. Like, you better oh. like cut those fingernails or quit that kind of dreaming. Always makes me laugh. When his arms get big and he starts running like a crazy person. And, yeah. he's, <laughs> and he's Freddy Krueger, so he's kind of crazy. Yes. He and is. we can use that word because we've been diagnosed it. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. So much. Like, yeah. since yeah. like he was three, me, like. 12, 11, ah, out, whatever. Out of the womb. <laughs> I mean, they, yeah, my mother said, I've never had a baby, like, deadlock me when they came out of the womb. And I was like, well, what does that mean? Just stared at you? Yeah, I did. I was just like, I know you, <laughs> like, literally, that's what she said. You, like, knew me. Yeah, well, that's awesome. I know. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, well, we're going to go because we want to go look at a museum, too. Yes, the Living Dead Museum. Which I didn't know was in a mall. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say. I'm back and I'm sane. Oh, and I have a really interesting story time for you guys about how I fell down a flight of stairs two weeks ago and it was the first time I ever got a, a normal brain scan. So that's something to look forward to for the next episode. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.